and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Wow, they have a lot of power, don't they? Man, we need this kind of power to deal with some of these puppets that are showing up on the world's stage acting so childishly. Maybe they need that fire to come down from heaven to shake them up and be awakened that there is true divine God where they're trying frantically to deny his existence. And this God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, period. Don't seek no other God. Don't search for no other God because there isn't. Jesus Christ is it. He is your full stop. That's where, you st where everything stops. All glory to his holy name. So, they have the power to bring down fire. They have the power to turn waters into blood. They can strike uh, the world with plagues for as often as they want. If anybody tries to harm them, they will be killed. These two witnesses are placed in the end of times by Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself. The Lord shakes the ground beneath them, all these secret societies. And every human being that says there is no God. What a shameful statement to state. So sad and so ignorant, so foolish, so blind. So blind. We need Elijah. Now we go to the epistle of St. Jude, New Testament. It's only one chapter. Chapter 1, verses 14 to 15. It talks about Enoch. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So we see in these biblical references between Elijah and Enoch, striking the earth with plagues, no rain, uh, passing judgment onto the whole world. Enoch is passing the judgment. Elijah is passing the judgment. These two witnesses in the end of times they will do wonders and miracles. They'll shake the ground beneath the people of the end of times. Now the other account, they say it is the two witnesses are Elijah and Moses, not Enoch, rather Moses. And we'll go through some biblical references. This is for your own information. And then it's up to you what you want to believe and accept. We'll come to that later. The two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. We go to Exodus chapter 7 verses 1 to 2. So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of his land. He's got authority. He's talking with judgment. And he's speaking against Pharaoh, the most powerful man on earth. And Moses in his 80s, barely talking. He had a stutter. Even with talks, wasn't very clear. Eight-year-old, barely talking, with no sword, no army, no nothing. Goes to the most powerful man on earth and he says, listen, mate, if you don't let the Israelite people out of Egypt, I'm going to chop you. Now we need Moses again, right? To go to all these little pharaohs and chop them all. Second Kings, this is Elijah. Second Kings chapter 1 verses 1 to 10. It's a bit long, we'll read it together. Second Kings chapter 1 verses 1 to 10. Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. 
Now Ahaziah fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go inquire of Baalizabub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishabite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baalizabub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah departed, and when the messengers returned to him, he said to them, Why have you come back? So they said to him, A man came up to meet us and said to us, Go return to the king who sent you, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baal-Zabub, the god of Ekron? Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. Then he said to them, What kind of man was it who came up to meet you and told you these words? So they answered him, A hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishabite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty with his, with his fifty men. So he went up to him, and there he was, sitting on the top of a hill. And he spoke to him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed, consumed him and his fifty. When we read in our topic today, it says anybody tries to harm them, fire will come out of their mouth and will devour them. The fire of Elijah. Just like that fire came down from heaven and devoured this captain and his 50 men. So as fire will come down and devour those who will go against these two witnesses. We go to the Gospel of Saint, according to St. Matthew. Chapter 17, verses 3 to 4. Please bear with us. Matthew 17, 3 to 4. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him, talking with the Lord. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Just like there was two witnesses on the Mount of Tabor, which we call the Feast of Transfiguration, where the Lord transfigured on that mountain. Who were the two witnesses there? Moses and Elijah. Maybe they were talking to the Lord Jesus about their testimony in the end of times. We don't know. The Holy Bible doesn't say what they were talking about. And lastly, my beloved, the book of Malachi or Malachi, the last prophet in the Old Testament, and we go to chapter 4 and verses 4 to 5. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, this is the Lord talking, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Which is the great and dreadful day of the Lord? The great tribulation. These two point of views and biblical references, there is the two witnesses being Enoch and Elijah and the other point of view being Moses and Elijah. Now beside the point, whether it's Enoch Elijah, Moses, Elijah, or maybe none of the above, the Lord will have two witnesses in the end of times regardless. And these two witnesses will be so powerful that they will strike the earth as often as they wish with plague. And anyone who tries to harm them will be devoured by, fa by fire and eventually be killed. Wow. These two witnesses 
who are the olive trees and the lampstands. They will be brought in the second half of the Great Tribulation. We 